Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to part four of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. We're getting into some valuable insights from this week's guests that you can definitely apply to your own journey. Please definitely stay tuned for advice and inspiration that can help us all. If you missed the first part of the week in part one, two, and three, definitely go back. The show notes should be filled with all the links, so go and click on them if you need to catch up. Also, definitely subscribe to the channel and all the other ones if you can. It's going to really help the show. But for now, enjoy the rest of the story. The um, the next part of your life you met, um, as you mentioned earlier, the, the, the love of your life, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, you, you were with your... Uh, wife for how long? For twenty one years. Yeah, wow. And that's what your third your that's third my third child. Yep. Third child, yeah. Yep. Kiara um, Kiara was born in twenty or two thousand three. Yeah. And talk can you because life series life seriously kind of changed, didn't it, mm-hmm. in the last few years, um, which has contributed to your journey now. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably even more so, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 20 or 2002, I got married to my former bride who, who was last year, 2023, has passed away. So I was married for 21 years. Uh, those days were pretty good because I was heavily into ministry. I got into church really heavy and, um, and understand, understood what my call was, um, and through my perspective and what I was purposed to do. Of course, music was a huge part of it, but how I'm able to have these conversations and dialogue with you is because um, I understand what my heart, I tapped into exactly what my heart was saying. So the level of religion in God um, that's a part of me, I speak from my experience out of love and out, out of positivity. So that's the essence of who I am. So my music nowadays, I'm doing R and B. I'm still not being disrespectful. I still get my point across. It still has a level of, of, uh, of the essence of positivity. And, and that's what I wanted to say. Um, that's how I operate my life. Um, so, um, throughout those 21 years, I did gospel music. Um, I was heavily in, in, in the gospel and religion. Um, and, I I was a licensed I am a licensed minister. <laughs> Let's just say that. Oh really? <laughs> yes, I'm a licensed minister. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been uh you know not not recently but you know throughout the course of my life and I've been on the podium uh preaching to the people of God uh about my perspective or what God has given me to to give them. Um and it is um honestly a uh, um a freeing sort of uh uh thing that I love to do and it's just basically like I'm talking to you just giving perspective giving mm-hmm. the word of god from that's in my heart to give to the people and help them understand what life is going to give them hopefully through my messages and I have a huge amount of them I just looked at them the other day just messages that I've kind of come across that I've kind of pondered and wrote and 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 give to them so they can live better um so that that is something that uh, I enjoy to do my perspective has changed to to some degree um as time went on but I I as as the old church would say I know where my help comes from so it's all good <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've not always been so um easy on yourself though, have you? Mm-mm. I remember from our chat last mm-hmm. time and it's just come to me now about you were pretty hard on yourself. Um, mm. I know we're probably going to go down that journey of your of your your wife um yeah. shortly. Um but yeah, I remember you saying you weren't really hard. You were so hard on yourself and did and you you had to change. You, I remember yourself reflecting, you saw yourself and you you just didn't feel right. You didn't you looked at yourself and you weren't happy about yourself? Mm-hmm. Can you expand on that a little bit? Uh, throughout the course of my life, I think I made huge mistakes. So I was married um, at twenty one, right? Yeah. I had a daughter at in nineteen ninety eight and was married. Um, that didn't last long. Um, then I had another child, yep. right? And then I met my former bride and had another child. So it was like there was a stint of my life that I was, I was seemingly making okay decisions, but wasn't making decisions that were all the way good. And 
I was hard on myself is because, man, I'm following kind of the same footsteps as my dad. <laughs> and it was like, I can't do this. Like, this is just weird. I had an encounter sitting in the front of my, um, my mother's house in my car. And I, I kind of literally said to myself, what the hell are you doing? What are you doing? Couldn't really figure that out. And I said, I have to change this. I have to change. I, I had to decide that I was going to change. And I did. I was hard on myself to a point because I just felt like I wasn't living up to what I believed I should be. Like my heart was being pulled in so many different directions. Um, um, I wanted to do good. Um, but it, I, I have to go back to, you know, preaching style. It's like the evil is always there. I want to do good, but the evil is always kind of there. I just chose, um, that I was going to, you know, kind of live better, you know, have better perspective. So I wasn't necessarily a jerk, but I can honestly say I probably wasn't living the best life that I should have been living. So I decided, mm -hmm, go ahead. No, no, no. Go on. No, no. Yeah, I just wanted to live better, and I decided that I was going to take that journey to living better. And how that looked was this: um, I had to change my perspective. I decided that I was going to. Um, I need to get married, and it wasn't the married part. I had to be in love and all that sort of stuff, and I had to do the right thing to me. You know, and I thought the first time I was doing the right thing, um, but that kind of went left, and I did it for the wrong reasons, and. The, when I got married to to my former bride who was passed away, I think I did it, I believe I did it in the right fashion, in the right way um, to make life better for me and better for my daughter and better for my kids. And sometimes when you take relationship on, um, sometimes relationships should make you better. You know, relationships should not contribute to the demise of yourself that partner that you choose should be the one that makes you better. And it did. So um, in 21 years, of course, you know, you're still maturing as a young guy. You're still trying to figure that out. But that kind of put boundaries in place and kind of makes you look at life a little better. You have responsibilities. You have things that you have to do. And that kind of focuses you on trying to kind of gauge on how you should live better. And for me, that helped. That helped. Yeah. So when you met your former bride and you were marrying her, what do you think was different in her that it wasn't in the others maybe, or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You didn't hold off for even longer and, and see what was down the track at 25, 26, 27 and so yeah. on. It, it was the, her, she was very organized in the way she thought, you know, her, um, you have to choose partners that kind of can help push your agenda. You know, she seemed to be very, she was very organized and what she did and how she reacted and how she responded and all of, all of that sort of stuff. So she was organized. Of course, um, I have a, a part in a documentary that I'm putting together. This is a sidebar <laughs> that's going to kind of dig a little more into that 21 years and what I experienced. But for the yeah. most part, I'm just going to give a little tease to y'all. Just understand it's going to be yeah. a little documentary put together. So I can, I'm having these conversations because they help me process. I'm having yeah. these conversations because they help me get through the process of not necessarily mourning, but just kind of getting it out of my spirit. I think so many times we just hold these things in and they don't help you. You know what I mean? Getting it out allows people to be helped by the perspective that you give it. And it's absolutely something that's going to help somebody. So I'm just kind of put that on the sidebar. So yeah. what I saw in her was her organization. She loved her family. My family seemed to have been broken. Um, and it was. Her family was much more together. She had a mom. She had a dad. Everybody was living together. She had to, you know, she had a cousin. She had everybody that was there. That support of a family on that side, I saw, I was like, man, that's very interesting. Stability as well. Yeah, right? stability. I was, I didn't experience that, that togetherness in a family mm -hmm. um, to that large degree until, until I met her. You know, her, she was the one that I kind of looked at. It's like, man, it's like, this is a little different. I don't know what this looks like, <laughs> you know, you know, yeah. you know, coming from the background that I had, I had came from. So I don't know what their struggle was or whatever the case may be. Um, of course, now I, I know a whole lot more. But um, during that time, I looked at that stability. It was like, whew, whew, that's a little different for me. So that's what that was the drawing in part for me. Did they did they welcome you into their family? Yeah, they welcomed me. 
Um, they welcomed me a lot into their family. Um, we're going to get into some documentary stuff at some point, but I'll, I'll get more specific with what that looked like at that looked at for me. Now at that point, they did welcome me in. That was the glue that kept us, you know, on the same path. They did welcome me. They welcomed all of my kids. Um, they loved them and treated them and still do and treat them like their family, which they are. And, um, those were absolutely great times. Um, um, you know, and that's what it was at that point. So I'll just keep it there. Yeah, no, fine. We'll have to just yeah. tune into the documentary, I suppose, <laughs> won't we? Um, you didn't tell me about that one last time, so you kept yeah, that one on the download, I didn't have you? To, I have to. He's got to go. <laughs> <laughs> but you heard, you heard it right here on Leading yep, Our Own Way. So absolutely, absolutely. I'll take it. Mm-hmm. When, when are you looking at having that finished then? I don't know. I'm going to take my time with it because I mean, what happens sometimes you don't want to give the bad, a bad vibe, a bad perspective. Sometimes when you give your story, sometimes people mm-hmm. be like, Oh my God, I don't believe you believe that, but yeah. I'm going to hopefully do it responsibly. So everybody could be uplifted the end of it all. So I'm going to tell you this, you listen to the specifics of it, listen to the process of it, but then listen to the conclusion. Cause sometimes mm-hmm. people get lost in, in the details of it and don't figure out or don't listen to it. Or wait, don't get to the end of the story. It's like taking sound bites. Wait, <laughs> Don't just take yeah. a sound bite. Listen for the end of the conclusion. You'll get a better understanding of what I was talking about. And then have the ability to have pers- good perspective as exactly. well. Though. Exactly. Yeah. It's my story. I'm sure everybody else has a story too. But my story people don't, is my so, story. Some people don't often understand the difference between perception and perspective, do they? No. You know? No. And uh, yeah, people no. are going to think about it from the chair that they're sitting in versus the chair that you're sitting in. Excellent. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, don't forget on the end of the credits, uh, at leading our own way. <laughs> got to get something. <laughs> Salute. I got you. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> I'm only joking. Yeah. No. Um, so, um, again, uh, so relationship with food. Uh, you had a bit of a relationship with food. You mm-hmm. saw yourself uh, mm-hmm. once reflecting. Where did you see yourself and what did you, what did you see? Well, I, I saw food was a huge contributor of me gaining weight, you know, in, in the simplest terms. But for mm. me, um, when I changed my perspective and got clean mentally, like I got healed mentally. And when you do that and you process through that, you have to understand that through that process, what you consume is going to be a huge contributor of what what this mind thinks. You know, for me, when you clean yourself, when you see how all of those things kind of contribute to what's going on in your brain and your mind, you understand that every aspect of your life has to line up with who you are. So if you're healthy and want to be healthy and want to be clean mentally, physically, spiritually, your relationships have to be cleaner. Um, uh, Your mindset has to be cleaner. Your perspective has to be cleaner. And what you consume, what you put into your body has to be cleaner. So I decided um, that I wasn't going to eat any more meat. at least meat on a large scale, right? Mm-hmm. So my diet can just consist of a huge amount of eat meat every day. Um, I eat rice, I eat potatoes, um, not enough vegetables. I don't, so simplify it. I just kind of went to a, um, a cleaner side of style of eating, which is pescatarian. Um, I do do a lot of vegan stuff, but for the most part, um, I saw that being a huge contributor of my, my, my mental becoming cleaner. So whatever you feed yourself, <laughs> whether mm-hmm. it be information, um, whether it be conversation, um, whether it be what you put in your ear and hear, whether you see w- your relationship. So every aspect of your life has to be cleaner. Um, for me, that was the a clear route into creating music that has a perspective of being clean and, um, it contributes to giving people great perspective, great understanding. So when they live their life, they could see, you know, I'm going to hear great things. I'm going to see great things. I'm going to eat great things. I'm going to consume myself and put myself in an environment that's clean. So when you decide that you're going to do that, every aspect of your life has to line up to what your new perspective is. So I couldn't say I love everybody and do this and, have fun and do this and I'm eating like who knows what. No, everything has to line up to me. That's my perspective mm. of it. Yeah. I, I really do believe it. Uh, it, food has become a, such a huge issue across the world in terms of mental health. If we're going to, I mean, I know there's layers to conversation with, you know, devices and whatever, but outside of sleep, mm-hmm. you know, humans have been trying to manipulate everything of, 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 
of what comes naturally to us as, mm-hmm. as humans. But it, we've conquered food and now we're seeing we've conquered food in the sense that of, you know, the fake food that we've made for the last 50, 60 years. Mm. And now we're seeing the physiological effects right. on the body. And, Absolutely. and, and, and t- what you nailed it on the head about, you know, probably being brain fogged. I, I was brain fogged. I was not present mm-hmm. at all. And uh, I only found out because, you know, my gallbladder exploded pretty much. Wow. And sepsis is setting. And I was mm-hmm. 20 minutes away from being in a coma. And that's why I went on the journey of reading all the brain books and human biology and, and, and understanding the, the, the brain and cellular level. And, mm-hmm. and, and food, I would say, apart, again, apart from sleep, because humans have not conquered sleep. We're trying to. We shift work and, and watching Netflix all day and devices of, whatever we're mm. trying to but mm. you know i think food food and sleep are the the top top root cause of fear and uh, 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 what's contributing towards fear you know anxiety byproducts of mm-hmm. depression and so mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. sadness and, and mm-hmm. no one's clear anymore mm-hmm. and i see it in schools all the time and it's mm. so focus and attention ah oh, it kills me so and and, and since i changed m- my relationship with food Again, not that I um, I would just eat shit at night because I was mm-hmm. in a dark space mm-hmm. with, you know, workplace mentality, mm. being, you know, workplace bullying and so on. Uh, I changed my relation with food and I I just saw, I just saw clearness, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. It's and, amazing. Um, it's absolutely it is amazing. amazing. It's amazing. If, I, if, so, if, if somebody had said that to me four years ago, I'm like, nah, I, I like my bar of <laughs> chocolate here and there and I... <laughs> You know, I'm going to eat the, the chicken nuggets. <laughs> yeah. 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 When I you looked know. at that stuff and paid attention to it, um, mm-hmm. so I don't, I'm not condemning anybody who does eat it, but I, I will no. say uh, pay attention to what you eat. Please make sure you take a pick. And that's just a plug that I'm just going to put in. When I looked at yeah. it and how it affected me, it was a huge contributor of brain fog. It was a, a just mm-hmm. confused. You just don't know exactly what the heck is going on. When you change that, Anybody who wants to live better, check out every aspect of your life. When I mean every aspect, I mean the company you keep, the conversations you have. The things you give to the world. Yes. Your, your, what you read, what you consume, what you eat. Mm-hmm. Just make a list of those things. Pay attention yep. to them. Be serious. And here, here's, I'm going to add this. Do not lie to yourself. Don't lie to yourself <laughs> and think that you can just kind of bypass anything that you consciously do checks and balances with yourself. Look at yourself. We talk about leading your own way. That's just been the thing that we've been talking about on, on Andrew's podcast here, leading your own way. You have to look at these things. If you want to live a better life, if you want to understand what those things are, check every area of your life, every area, whatever area, and be honest with yourself. If you're honest with yourself, you'll find what's not, not what shouldn't be there and you'll remove it. If you want to live better, do not lie to yourself. Remove those things that's not contributing to the health of your life. Leading your own way is is just that. Move those yeah. things that's not contributing to your day-to-day life. Move them. Great piece of advice. Um, but you know on that on that point of lying to yourself. I don't know if I'm going to say this right, but I I, I thought about it today actually. Um mm. just somebody said something connected to it, but I think some of the biggest lessons learned on in our lives is from the lesson from the lies that we tell ourselves. Mm. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, Powerful. And, and, and by the things that you're subjecting yourself to, if I would have been, I'll say this, if, if I would have been the person that blamed my dad for everything that I didn't get from a father, um, how is that contributing to my life? No. Yeah, absolutely. How, if if I was to take uh, the era of the 80s and use that as being a backdrop to the disparities that I have in my life and all of this sort of stuff, how is that contributing to my life? Mm-hmm. I don't I don't I don't I don't know how it would. It's just it, for me, this is my perspective. To me, I would be ignorant to take those things that are negative and place them in my life and think that my life is going to be lived any better. I just don't think that that's a, 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 a fair assessment to do to yourself. When I say, when we say don't lie to yourself, it's just that don't use those things that are negative and think that that's going to create positive. If, if anything, use them as fuel 
to go to your next destination, to be positive, to be or put the edge, put put the energy in the world that's going to help promote positivity, not negative. It's not going to promote negativity if you ponder on those things all the time. Look in the media, look and see what's going on with different artists in the world. Look at those things and, and see if those things were a factor in their life. How did it benefit them now? If they would have looked and just took some time and, 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 and looked at all the negative things, it wouldn't have perpetuated into what it is now. You see from time after time after time after time, so many different people in the entertainment industry that take the issues that they never dealt with and they perpetuated them and they became something completely out of control where they just couldn't control themselves. Hmm. For me, I just don't want that to be a part of my life. You have to decide that and you have to not lie to yourself and you have to put people around you that's going to say, hey, no, you can't do that. No, no. No, I'm going to limit you on this. Don't do this. So when you put those people around you, that's going to say, no, you're putting limits on. That's contributing to the health of your life. Okay. When you make sure you're eating the right thing and paying attention and getting the right sleep, those are going to put you uh, in areas or in, in mindset that's going to help you uh, progress in life. Just yeah. pay attention. Look, everything matters. Leading your own way is putting you in the mindset. I'm not going to look at that stuff that I know is wrong and say, yeah, I'm going to do that. No, that's because that's not going to help. <laughs> that's not yeah. going to help. Put yeah. yourself in better mindsets, put yourself in better decisions, eat better. That's going to contribute to you leading your own way and being what you need to be in, in your purpose. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I only recently really probably took out the emotion out of the, what I would have considered what would be traumatic to me. Mm -hmm. Not everybody pro else necessarily would, say it's traumatic to that would have been to them maybe i don't know but i took the i've started to really take the emotion out of it and when i think when you take the emotion out of things you can use it as wisdom mm -hmm. you can only use it as wisdom once that you've taken the emotion out of it yeah yeah you know I, i'm no expert i'm just experienced i heard i hear that all the time i'm not an expert i just have experience and just kind of knowledge and understanding mm -hmm. to kind of go into the right di direction so good and i think with everything you've just said there will will paint a really good picture to how you how you got to this mindset as mm -hmm. well R more recently so your life started to change in 2021 as you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier i think it's probably the perfect time to yeah. just dig into that if that's okay yeah sure um um my former bride at, at a time in her life um um she wasn't a good sleeper she wasn't um um she would always wonder about different things her mind would wonder and, and I, I don't know. I'm no physician, but sometimes I would even believe that um, part of her um, her sickness that she that came down with her was kind of really, really, really deep, 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 deeply internal. Um, she just um, took a lot of things on in her mental. She was a teacher by by trade, and she took that very, very seriously. You know, from our children and making sure that they get the right education, and even if she was an autistic, she had a master's degree in special education and probably one of the things that she really really en enjoyed was taking care of children that didn't learn as fast as other folks will will so yeah. she yeah. she really really took that to heart she really loved her job so she would spend hours and hours and hours up doing IEPs and uh, she would spend hours in making sure that she placed children in the right areas of their learning curve, whatever their learning curve was, she was going to the research and find a way to make certain that they could go into the right direction. And she did that for many, many, many years. Yeah. <laughs> um, up until the day um, she really got sick and she really couldn't do it anymore. Um, she accepted a position um, at the school district at the main office where she was uh, going to be heading the teachers that come in that are new, she wanted to be a part of just kind of helping the new teachers understand uh, what the process was when you're in your classroom. So she, mm -hmm. it's great, great job to have because of the passion that she had. She wanted to be a part of, of just kind of helping the new teachers come in a honorable position to have because she would be responsible for making sure that those teachers understood what it was and what it should have been. And um, she did it. She loved it. And um, she just 
she took care of herself, yes, but she took a lot on in her mind and her mental. She did. She did. She took a lot on. And sometimes uh, to her, um, her passions, you know, um, be, just became a part of her life. And she just couldn't, she couldn't scratch that itch. She needed it. So she wouldn't sleep good. She would eat, but she wouldn't eat crazy amounts. It's just she just did not get a lot of rest. And you mentioned something when you said rest. You need sleep. You got to take time to rest your body, turn the TV off at night um, and just rest. And sometimes she would come home and just crash for a couple of hours because she'd be up to six in the morning doing different things. And she'd go to work for a whole eight hours and come home, crash for a couple of hours. And she'll do the whole thing all over again, all over. again. She'd do it regularly. through the night, through the night. She'll work. She'll work. I mean, that, that's not healthy. Yeah. So, you know, you, and just like me, you just can't stop a person from doing what their passions are. And, and, and I'm not saying I contributed to it, but I'm pretty sure that that was probably a cause of it. She just kind of worked, 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 worked. Um, mm-hmm. So she developed um, a sickness um, and had some difficulty. And she ultimately passed away from the complications of that sickness. And um, um, 2001 is when it started kind of going left. Um, where she um, started to have some difficulties, went to the doctor. Um, and all of it was, in many cases, just just rest. She just needed rest. Just needed mm-hmm. rest. Just needed rest. And um, she, you know, she tried to get it, and it just kind of progressed. And, and we lost her um, June 23rd. It just kind of got out of control. So she, we went to a couple of stints. She had, um, um, she got chemotherapy. Um, and, uh, um, she got into remission and then it came back. And then when it came back, um, it was probably, you know, a point where she just, she just couldn't take it anymore. Um, so with, uh, last year, uh, that week she passed away, she was on her way to get chemotherapy and they told her that she couldn't get it because she was so weak. And um, she was just trying her best to just stay around. I remember having a conversation with her. The last thing she ever said to me was, sometimes life isn't fair. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.